War. War never changes. Until it does. What the f***? When we think about wars, usually the first thing that comes to mind is World War II, World War I, the war in Ukraine, hell, perhaps even the Yugoslav War. Yet, there is one that is quite often forgotten in the European continent, and the absolute shit show that it was has been completely pushed out of our collective recollection. That war is none other than the Vietnam War. The Vietnam War has been an absolute another leviathan of a historic event that single-handedly crushed the American ego by proving in fact that the American war machine is not invincible. And in fact, all it takes to destroy its self-esteem is a couple of rice farmers with AKs and nothing better to do. But to truly understand the absolute train wreck of the Vietnam War, we have to go back to the humble year of 1877. France, always eagerly on the search for a new mass of poor people to squeeze dry of commodities, set its eye on the Balkans of the East, Southeast Asia, and seized Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia, colonizing them and gaslighting their population into thinking French cuisine is superior to theirs. Vietnam, being no stranger to what life was like under an occupier, having been colonized by China four times, one time for a thousand years, almost immediately began springing up movements calling for its independence all across the country. As you can imagine, like every other colony, life under the French was absolutely miserable for the average person. Many were forced to work in vast rice and rubber plantations for long hours each day, but got almost no compensation in return, with all the profits going back to Paris. In World War II, things then went from bad to worse, as the Japanese took control of Vietnam. Vietnam became a bloodbath during this time period, as France and Japan fought over control of the country, killing each other in the name of liberating the land from tyranny. As a result, an independence movement led by this guy, Ho Chi Minh, took hold, and in 1945, just mere hours before Japan's surrender, Vietnam declared independence, with its proclamation of independence literally modeled after the American one. France reacted as you can imagine, and drove Ho Chi Minh's forces into the north of the country. Minh appealed to America for help, but because the world switched from being a bang bang shoot the Nazi type war to if this commie bastard does anything, I will literally bomb him back to the stone age, also help me god. Type war, also known as the cold war, America was deeply opposed to aiding any red bastards and instead aided France, while China and the USSR gave weapons and financial support to the Vietnamese. After only a few months of fighting, Vietnam perfected the guerrilla tactics it will later become famous for, practicing smoking down fresh French recruits from the trees, bushes, secret tunnels, and practically any crevice where the rule, if I fit, I sit, applies. France tried to take control of a small airstrip in the Dien Bien Phu Valley to be a base for their military action, and hoped to lure their foe out into an open attack in which they'd win via their superior numbers. However, Vietnam had learned a long time ago how to fight technologically superior foes when expelling the occupying Chinese, and instead surrounded the French with trench warfare to isolate the garrisons, albeit with heavy weaponry provided by China and the USSR. As a result, France took severe casualties and decisively lost the Battle of Dien Bien Phu. Thus, France was expelled and a truly independent Vietnam was born. As a result, this got the great powers' attention, who were beginning to sense a larger conflict on the horizon. In 1954, the Geneva Accords decreed that Vietnam was to be split in two, with a 17th parallel splitting the country into two states. The North was to be ruled by communist Ho Chi Minh, and the South would be led by a Western-friendly emperor, Bao Dai, the 13th and final emperor of the Nguyen dynasty, and the final emperor of Vietnam. Bao Dai wasn't the most popular guy, having been accused of being a puppet ruler of both the French and Japanese occupiers. Nevertheless, this two-state solution was meant to be temporary, and elections would be held in two years to unify the country. But, as you can imagine, considering there was a committable chance that a popular commie leader who successfully kicked out the colonizer and liberated his people and workers from exploitation could seize complete power over the country, America couldn't let that happen. Also, America was keen to avoid a repeat of losing the region to the communists, the way they lost uh, Eastern Europe at the post-World War II Yalta conference. 
But even though Eastern Europe fell under the Soviets, there's still a chance to take it back by engaging in ENLISTED BABY! If you've ever wanted to follow the path of your ancestors in battle but never felt like waking up at 5am while a drill sergeant screams his lungs out at you, then Enlisted is the game for you. Enlisted is one of the most historically authentic World War II multiplayer shooters with dynamic and action packed gameplay set on a huge map with dozens of soldiers, vehicles, tanks and planes all fighting for their supremacy. Everything from equipment, uniforms and vehicles are precisely historically accurate as well as the dozens of the game's historical historical campaigns such as the Battle for Moscow and Invasion of Normandy, which will allow you to relive some of the most influential events of World War II. Best of all, the game is completely free and available on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5 or the previous console generations, with cross-platform support so you can team up with your friends no matter what platform you're playing on. So go and check out the game right now and get your exclusive bonus for joining via my link in the description. By supporting Enlisted, you support me as well. And here officially begins the shit show of American interference in Vietnam. During this time, a crucial thing to keep in mind is that the US was adhering to the Truman Doctrine, aka the policy of no goddamn son of mine will be a Hassan fan, aka containment, meaning that the US would provide political, military and economic aid to democratic countries that were fighting to prevent the spread of communism. Another important guiding principle in American foreign relations policy was the domino theory, which stipulated that communism was more contagious than chlamydia in a Thai resort, with one nation having it guaranteeing that its neighboring countries would then catch commie fever as well. And without the condom of American protection, soon the whole world would be a Marxist Leninist book club and doomed to a fate of unfunny memes with walls of text as their punchline. As a result, many Americans and American policymakers held the belief that America had to step in and looking at how well its interference in World War II went, this would most certainly be a piece of cake. Thus, Vietnam was left as a country divided down the middle by deep ideological divisions, which was guaranteed to erupt in a conflict that mirrored the East-West divide at the time, with the North backed by the Soviets and China and South allied to the West. Emperor Bao Dai in the South was succeeded by his former Prime Minister Ngo Dinh Diem in the 1955 State of Vietnam Referendum. Diem won with 99% of the vote, which was widely seen as fraudulent, but Diem proclaimed the state now the Republic of Vietnam and himself to be president. Diem was a rabid anti-communist and supported by the US and his pure hatred of the economically challenged brutally oppressed his people as a way of suppressing any brain dead idea of finances from spreading. This treatment got so bad that many Buddhist monks kept setting themselves on fire as a way of protesting these awful conditions their people were subjected to. And you know things are bad when uh, Buddhists are kindling themselves up like a Dark Souls bonfire. His policies also backfired as many South Vietnamese became sympathetic and even defected to the North due to his schizophrenic mistreatment and tyrannical actions against his people. Then things escalated as in 1959 the North Vietnamese government approved a people's war on South Vietnam and invaded the country. By 1961 US intelligence estimated that North Vietnamese fighters had effectively encircled Saigon and that Diem's government had essentially collapsed into a failed state. Soon after prison Kennedy they sent advisors over to assess the conditions of the area and they basically found its uh, rulers to be um, useless. So there was a coup which America was happy to see and after which South Vietnam went into a worse identity crisis than a biracial child in the Midwest, altering between 12 different governments in a time span of under two years lasting from 1963 to 1965, with the best of the rulers being merely inept and the worst of them being... Uh, by 1964, the US finally entered formal military intervention, sending a destroyer, the USS Maddox, to Vietnamese waters, where it encountered three North Vietnamese torpedo boats in the Gulf of Tonkin. When the Maddox fired a warning shot, the Vietnamese shot back torpedoes and machine gun fire. The Johnson administration, which had been crafting secret plans of military involvement in Vietnam, took this as its chance to invade the country under the pretenses that the US was attacked by the Vietnamese. As a result, 
the US started a bombing campaign and decided to give Vietnam the Belgrade 99 Special. Soon after, in 1965, Johnson ordered US troops to be sent to Vietnam. At the same time, the Soviet Union and China increased their support to North Vietnam, sending them precious commie shekels and tons and tons of God's chosen weapon, the AK-47. The American public was more or less supportive, assuming the mighty US military would prevail in a short time and the world would be saved from the evils of communism or whatever. The main goal of the war was to bolster the South Vietnamese forces up so they'd be able to overcome the North, protect them until they're ready to kick some commie ass, and then go back home to sweet home Alabama. And this was basically the strategy at first, with numerous bombing campaigns conducted targeting the North in an attempt to weaken their combat capabilities and lower morale. By 1967, there were over half a million US troops stationed in Vietnam. Immediately, the US troops were out of their depths. Unlike the familiar temperate weather of Europe, this war was fought in the humid, dense tropical jungle where the Viet Cong, aka the Vietnamese communists, would ambush, set booby traps, and then escape through extensive networks of underground tunnels. These tunnels weren't just sheltered escape routes, they were constructed as military bases, and even if a village was occupied by enemy forces, underneath it, in the tunnels, business would go on as usual. These tunnels were so important that the villagers were instructed to each dig a meter of tunnel each day. The most important one was in Kuchi district, only 32 kilometers from Saigon, which had 300 322 kilometers of tunnels encompassing chambers of arms factories and storage water supply rice storage hospitals aid stations kitchens and sleeping chambers the Vietnamese also knew they'd have no chance against numerically and technologically superior forces instead depend on head and run tactics when the numbers weren't in their favor these unfamiliar strategies overwhelmed and confused the troops as they had issues even finding their foes let alone shooting at them so America frustrated by their enemy unhelpfully refusing to make themselves open targets and relegated to a fly swatted by unexpected swatter, decided to use a lovely little helper called Agent Orange, aka Napalm Bombs, which would clear an area by basically burning and dissolving all foliage. As a result, over 3 million hectares of forest was defoliated with catastrophic environmental damage, with plants and animals avoiding these areas even today. Worst was the damage to those who interacted with it, with both the Vietnamese and American troops reporting severe long-term damage to not only themselves but their offspring resulting in various types of birth defects and cancers. The Vietnam War is often said to be the first televised war, with numerous journalists present on the ground in the direct action itself. This changed the history of journalism in wartime forever. Before this, the government and media worked closely together in selecting what information was sent home, as a way to keep the morale high and public opinion united, basically producing propaganda. This. Uh, did not happen here. In between the government's patriotic messages of how it was America's duty to defend the world from the evil commies, journalists were sending back reports including images of dead innocent civilians, like mothers whose final moments were sheltering their children, and leveled villages with destroyed landscapes. These images shocked the American public, and by 1967, Americans were growing more and more frustrated at being bogged down in an increasingly pointless war that, uh, on paper, should have been won immediately. Huge protests were staged in major cities, with an entire anti-war counterculture created in response to their administration's actions. Thus was born America's most heinous byproduct of this war, the hippies. In late 1967, North Vietnamese guerrilla tactics resulted in thousands of American casualties, but the real shocker came in January 1968, when the Tet Offensive began, which was when the North Vietnamese army had a coordinated mass offensive throughout more than 100 cities in the south with tens of thousands of casualties between both sides. By 1968, the war was so unpopular that President Johnson decided not to run again. In his place, the honest and totally not corrupt Richard Nixon was elected, with a promise to end the draft. A promise he did not keep, as a draft lottery was put in place which uh, disproportionately targeted low-income and minority Americans. During this time, many men fled to Canada, and uh, you know things are bad when Americans willingly 
travel to Canada. Nixon did, however, reduce the troops, going from a peak of 550,000 in 1969 to about 70,000 in 1972. All the while, the Vietnamese were handing Americans their asses, and the American public was getting angrier and angrier. In 1969, Nixon and noted supervillain Henry Kissinger also had the wonderful idea to add onto the secret bombings of neutral Laos with some secret bombings of also neutral Cambodia. America, suspicious that sympathetic communist forces in neighboring countries were supplying aid to Vietnam, proceeded to drop 2 million tons of bombs in Laos from 1964 to 1973. This equaled a plane load of bombs being dropped every 8 minutes, 24 hours a day for 9 years. This gives Laos the dubious honor of being the most bombed country in the world. When Congress found out, it was pissed at the illegal actions and some members even drafted impeachment charges, but they were overshadowed by the Watergate scandal at the time. By 1970, the American public was officially sick and tired of this shit. Many events were only being brought to the public's attention just now, one of which was the My Lai massacre in 1968, the events in which cannot be mentioned in the video that wishes to remain monetized. In May of that year was also the Kent State shooting where National Guardsmen fired into anti-war demonstrators at Ohio Kent State University and killed four students. Also in 1971, the Pentagon Papers were published by the New York Times which showed that the government repeatedly lied about how much it was actually involved in the war. In December 1972, Nixon was feeling desperate. As he told his advisors, he refused to be the first president to lose the war. He ordered the most intensive air offensive of the war yet and dropped 20,000 tons of bombs over major cities. Still, uh, this resulted in almost no gains. The draft soon ended. Nixon was impeached for illegal actions not related to this war, and President Gerald Ford came in, who in 1975 said that the American military involvement in Vietnam was to end. In April 1975 came the famous fall of Saigon. With their government seized, South Vietnam surrendered, with American and Vietnamese refugees being helicoptered out. Two months later, North and South Vietnam became one under the banner of communism. America, the greatest military force in the entirety of human history, had lost decisively. And there were no moral victories, only loss and devastation for all. 60,000 American troops were dead, but this was nothing compared to the truly horrifying figures of Vietnam. Around 550,000 North Vietnamese and 225,000 South Vietnamese soldiers were dead and around 600,000 civilians died in the total conflict. Although exact numbers are still very hard to come by. In addition to the 60,000 men who perished, the war also massively impacted American culture. As mentioned before, this is where the hippies were born after all. The era was also marked by a culture of distrust and cynicism in the government and much of it even dominated entire genres of music. The war also became synonymous with failure and mistakes in American foreign policy and provided a blueprint for future what not to do's. So uh, thank god America never got into a stupid pointless war ever again, am I right? <laughs> Obviously, the war negatively affected Vietnamese and American relations for years to come. Because, uh, how can any country possibly look beyond such pointless destruction and devastation on its populace and not just move forward but even offer forgiveness? Even so, reconciliation between the two was achieved some decades later, and Vietnam's opinion of America eventually improved. Arguably even to the level where they can be considered now an American ally. Today, some might even argue that the relations between the two are great, which also adds on an extra degree of pointlessness to this war. As a whole, the Vietnam War went down in history as one of America's biggest and stupidest mistakes, and as a study guide on what not to do when intervening in another country's internal affairs. Hopefully, future generations can learn from it so nothing of the sort ever happens again. And with that said, may Vietnam and its people have a prosperous and bright future. Anyways, thank you for watching this video, if you did give it a like and subscribe and uh, hit that bell button as well. Also a huge shout out for the continued support by these wonderful people. 
Without them, I wouldn't be able to make this type of content. And again, thanks again to Elicit for sponsoring today's video. Make sure to go and use our link in the description below to play for free today and get that free massive bonus pack for 3 days premium, time, troops and weapons to jump right into action. My name is Janos and you've watched Living Ironically in Europe.